Good evening, and thank you for joining us for tonight's story. We're reading one of our stories from the Silk Road uh, collection retold by Cherry Gilchrist. Stories from the Silk Road, and tonight's story is Monkey and the River Dragon. Monkey is one of the most mischievous spirits that has ever scampered through heaven. He is clever, quick, and he can't sit still. He is rude to everyone, even the Jade Emperor, but everyone is fond of him. Monkey could never lead a peaceful life. That would be much too boring. Now, Monkey has been given a difficult job to do. He has to help a priest travel to the west from China. It's a long and dangerous journey, but the priest, Tripitaka, has promised to find sacred Buddhist writings in India and bring them back to China. He and Monkey are well on their way now, but I'll tell you what happened right at the start of their journey to the west. Monkey and Tripitaka were freezing cold. They had reached some high mountains, and they could hardly climb the steep icy paths. A terrible wind was blowing around them, and Monkey was beginning to feel very sorry that he'd ever come on this journey at all. He was just thinking that things couldn't get much worse, when of course they did. "'What's that noise?' asked Tripitaka. They could hear the sound of rushing water. "'Oh, yes,' said Monkey gloomily. "'I remember now. It's the Eagle Grief River.' Very soon they came to the edge of the river. Tripitaka was just going to ask why it had such a funny name when a huge dragon rose up out of the swirling water and came toward them. Tripitaka stared in amazement, but Monkey knew better. He grabbed his master quickly and pushed him up the bank again. Then he ran down to try and save Tripitaka's horse, but he was too late. He got there just in time to see the dragon open its jaws and swallow the poor horse whole. "'Now what am I to do?' asked Tripitaka, when Monkey had told him the bad news. "'Oh, dear, there's so far to go, and I can't possibly walk.' He felt sorry for himself that he began to cry. "'Stop that at once!' shouted Monkey angrily. Other people crying made him angry for some reason. Only he was allowed to feel sorry for himself. I'll go and find the wretched horse. Maybe I can persuade the dragon to spit him out. Don't be so cross, monkey, said a voice from the sky. And don't weep, priest. We are divine spirits who have been sent to help you. Tripitaka immediately began to bow down, reverently. "'Well, which spirits are you?' asked the monkey. "'I know all of you. Just say your names and I'll check you off the list.' "'Lu Ting and Lu Chia,' said the voice. "'Plus the guardians of the five points, the four sentinels, and the eighteen protectors of monasteries. "'The golden-headed guardian is always somewhere around, too. "'We take it in turns to look after you.' "'All right.' Look after the master while I go and rescue that horse, said Monkey. Don't worry about me, he said to Tripitaka. I'll be all right. Dear Monkey, first he tightened the belt of his brocade jacket. Then he pulled his tiger skin around him. Then he took his iron club and shouted down into the depths of the water. You useless fish down there, give me back my horse. The dragon was quietly digesting his meal of delicious white horse and he was furious that someone should disturb him after lunch. He lurched up through the waves and shouted back, "'Who's there? Who dares to make such a noise up there?' "'Give me back my horse!' yelled Monkey again, and swung his club at the dragon's head. The dragon snapped at Monkey and his terrible jaws, with his terrible jaws and slashed at Monkey with his fierce claws. It was a long and dreadful fight, but Monkey outwitted the dragon every time until the beast slid back into the river, exhausted. Nothing Monkey could do would bring him out again. When Monkey told Tripitaka, the priest was not impressed. You dealt with a tiger the other day, he said, and you told me that you were good with dragons too. 
So what's the problem? I'll show you, shouted Monkey, in a terrible temper again, after Tripitaka's insult. Just you wait and see who's master. He ran back to the river and cast a special spell on, it, on the water to stir it up and make it rough. The furious dragon rose up through the waves. What kind of a horrible monster are you? he shouted at Monkey. Will I never get rid of you? Just give me back my horse, cried Monkey impatiently. And how can I do that? asked the dragon. It's already inside me, isn't it? I'll beat you with this cudgel, screamed Monkey. Then you'll think of a way to give it back. They fought again, and again the dragon couldn't hold out against Monkey. Suddenly he changed himself into a water snake and wriggled away into the grass. Monkey thrashed at the grass with his club, but it was no good. He couldn't find the snake. So he said the magic and holy word Om, which brought all the spirits of that place flying toward him. They were quite in awe of Monkey. They knew him as wise Monkey, which he was really, even when he appeared to behave so foolishly. Where's my master's horse? he asked them impatiently. Great sage, they said. We didn't know that you had a master. You never used to obey anyone, in heaven or on earth. That was before I got into real trouble with the Jade Emperor, and they shut me up in a mountain for five hundred years, said Monkey. They only let me out to do this job. I've got to help this priest, who's going to India, to search out Buddhist scriptures. It's a sacred task, you see, and I have to serve him on the journey. So tell me about this dragon. Well, the dragon is new around here. There were no dragons at all in the river before. We think that the goddess Kuan Yin must have sent him. We'd better go and ask her. Now, Monkey knew that if Kuan Yin had sent the dragon, this was serious, because she was the spirit of all the Buddhas that had ever been in the world, and all that were to come. But how long would the spirits take to get to the far realms where she lived? Perhaps Monkey and Tripitaka would be dead from cold or starvation, or both, before they returned. Don't you worry, a voice in the sky said suddenly. It was the golden-headed guardian. You all stay where you are. I'll go and find her. Thank you very much, Monkey answered. I'd be very grateful if you'd go at once. The guardian soared back up through the clouds and headed for the southern ocean, where Quin Yin, the goddess of mercy, resided. He found her sitting peacefully on her lotus seat in a bamboo grove. Your ladyship, he said. Tripitaka, the priest, has lost his horse in Eagle Grief River. It was swallowed up by a dragon. Oh, no, Quan Yin cried. That dragon is meant to help Tripitaka. I put him there on purpose. What's he doing eating the man's horse? I'd better come and straighten it out. So saying, Quan Yin rose from her lotus seat, left her sacred grove, and crossed the southern ocean on a beam of magic light. When she reached Monkey, he was in a roaring bad temper again. He leaped into the air, shouting, You're not much good at your job. You call yourself the teacher of the Buddhas, and yet you put monsters like this in our path. You should be helping us. You ridiculous red-bottomed monkey, Quan Yin snapped back. I've taken a lot of trouble to see Tripitaka safely on his way, and also to make you a bit more holy and serious, too. And this is all the thanks I get? Don't try and blame me, said Monkey. I would have been only too happy just to amuse myself when I finally got out of that mountain. But no, you would have me go on this dreadful journey. Well, what are we going to do now? Quan Yin laughed. Oh, Monkey, she said. We have to keep you busy, or you'd soon be up your old tricks again. The dragon is meant to offer your master a ride. No ordinary horse could carry him over such difficult ground, you know. That's all very well, said Monkey grumpily, but now he's eaten the horse and won't come out of the river again. Quan Yin ordered the golden-headed guardian to go to the edge of the river and cry, Third son of the Dragon King, come out. He'll be out fast as lightning, you'll see, she said. And he was. The dragon appeared immediately from the water and bowed to Quan Yin. 
Didn't you realize that Monkey is serving the scripture seeker on his journey? asked Kuan Yin. No, I didn't, said the dragon, a little sulkily. I was hungry yesterday and ate his horse, and then he fought me because of it. How was I supposed to know who he was? He never said anything about scriptures. You never asked me my name, retorted the monkey indignantly. Oh, yes, I did, said the dragon. I asked what kind of a horrible monster you were, but you didn't answer. You just complained about your horse. Well, monkey, said Kuan Yin, you know what to do in the future. Always tell people that you're on a pilgrimage to find the scriptures. Then there won't be any more trouble. But knowing monkey, she doubted this. Then she went to the dragon and removed the jewel of wisdom from under his chin. She took her wand of willow leaves and shook it over him, sprinkling him with dew. Then she blew upon him with a magic breath and cried, Change! The dragon at once changed into a horse, exactly like the one that he had been eaten, that he had eaten. Now then, the goddess said sternly to the dragon horse, behave yourself, stop eating what doesn't belong to you, and I promise you shall become an enlightened creature with a golden body. This is what everyone who follows the Buddhist teachings longs for, the enlightenment that brings complete wisdom about life and death. So the dragon horse bowed down humbly to Kuan Yin and said that he would do as he was told. That's all very well, said Monkey, grabbing at Kuan Yin rather rudely as she turned to go. It's very difficult, you know, traveling to the west. There are dreadful mountains and precipices, and who knows what other monsters we'll meet on the way. No, I'm sorry, but you've got to do better than that. Well, Monkey, said Kuan Yin, in the old days, you used to be enthusiastic about enlightenment. Now, as soon as things get a little difficult, you want to run back home again. Don't you know that Earth herself will help you when you are in trouble, if you call on her? If necessary, I'll come myself, but I do have something else to give you. Taking up her willow wand, she swished the leaves over Monkey's back. Change, she cried again. At once, three of the leaves changed into magic hairs. There, she said, take these. They will get you out of any trouble, however bad. And indeed, there were plenty more adventures before Monkey and Tripitaka finally found the precious scriptures and brought them safely back home again. That was the end of Monkey and the Dra River Dragon. Thank you so much for listening. Good night, everybody.